Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Else. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Can become a member of the channel. Link is in the description to do that. So if you want to do that, please let me know. It really does help the channel out as well financially. It helps us uh, do all the new things and uh, helps us as well when I do stupid shit. I can change this camera. So new camera angle. Uh, I'm looking a little bit sharper. It's been meaning to be changed. So peace, love and light to you and all the members. And let's get into it. Carlton versus West Coast Eagles at Optus on the Sunday evening fixture or early afternoon if you are in WA. And the Blues going into this one with probably the most at stake that they've had all season. And it feels like we've slipped back into 2022, doesn't it? Where the where you need wins. Carlton coming off three losses in a row, one win in their last five versus two wins in a row for the Eagles against North Melbourne and the Gold Coast Suns. 16th plays ninth, four points. This is like really an eight-pointer for the Blues. A lot of changes as well for the Blues. Adam Saad, Harry Mackay, Jack Martin, Lockie Foggy, Charlie Kerner and Jordan Boyd all missing on injuries. This is reminiscent at the moment of day two of my stag do. So this is really bad. People just dropping like flies. And at the moment, the vibe around the football club, the vibe around the fans, isn't he good? Let's be honest. I'm back to punching desks. I'm also back to being sarcastic, which is always a good place for me to be because when there is darkness, you have to find the light. It's been confirmed already that Cooper Lord and Ashton Moyer will debut in this game and that gives a little bit of impetus what does that mean that doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of things that could be just clinging on to hope but they are going to come in probably about six months too early they're probably 2025 20, debuts if we are honest Ashton Moyer has really been showcasing his engine and the work he's done working high up the ground on the wing. He's going to be a real integral part of this with Carlton going in smaller. He's going to have to work them flanks, work that link, and hopefully we know he has got the ability, particularly in his draft and his early VFL form, when he was playing solely at the half forward, of making something out of nothing. Cooper Lord is a very interesting acquisition, a guy that has really gone from strength to strength in the VFL and one that I'm really looking forward to in Carlton's disjointed midfield. As we check the stats coming up soon, you will see that the midfield numbers are almost barbaric at the moment. And if we looked at these stats in the last five games, Carlton are more of a core position side that we'd see in 15th. And that has partly come down to the midfield. Once the midfield breaks down, we're starting to see Carlton counteract that by really really flooding the corridor which takes away Carlton's ability to spread when they do the win the ball it becomes slow it becomes stodgy and ultimately it becomes horrible to watch and it's very interesting that Jackson Binns is named on the field for all of his knocks defensively one thing that Jackson does incredibly well is he keeps his width he refuses to go inside which is integral in the way the Blues have played in the last six to seven weeks we have seen our win get caught into that trap of chasing the ball so this game here really makes a real interesting avenue and a real interesting prospect because it's a must win game the Blues are going to have to change their options change the way they play because the personnel has changed if they stick to Bob it long to Harry and Charlie when Harry and Charlie aren't in we're in for a world of hurt. So let's look at these numbers. And as you can see, the score sources at the moment have been a real, real, real damn there. If you've been following this show where we've seen Carlton top 10 for all these stats, they are only top 10 for one of the stats now. And this is just shows you what the last five can do. Carlton averaging 28 scores from stoppage versus 35.8, 9th versus 14th. And this has been really interesting as the Blues try and negate this, as teams focus on Carlton stoppages, we have reacted to try and stop the stoppage against, which has played an extra player behind the ball to stop that run. We're no longer seeing players play that kind of halfback role at the back of stoppage where we look to feed it out. We're looking to stop you getting through it. And it has caused chaos, as you can see, Carlton now are the 15th best side at defending from stoppage albeit versus the 16th. So stoppage straight away is a key battleground here. This is where the Blues haven't really been hurt too much in their stoppage makeup, but the addition of Cooper Lord. Now, what can that mean? Genuinely, when you look at the midfield, I feel like Cowan have copied and pasted too many of the same types of players. 
Cooper Lord adds a little bit of difference. He's a hard guy. He can get the ball, but he can also break lines with his pace. It's going to be really interesting here if Vossi goes straight off the bat and tries to keep that burst player through. We haven't had a burst player through there for a long time. And what we've seen is Walsh and Chera have almost had to become that burst player when they're more of the accumulator, ball provider, who you want on the outside. Suddenly, Cooper Lord is a guy that can take that ball and go with it himself and get Cowton going. That has been a big key area in stoppage, the overuse, the putting themselves under pressure. And you can see with the differential, Cowton negative 11, 16th in the league versus 12th. This is a big area of the concern. West Coast Eagles will attack in this area. They have been used to it. We genuinely see sides that look to slow the game down, who are weaker opposition with being complementary, try and slow this down. And this is the big scary stat. Cowan's turnover game has gone from number one to 10th in the league, 42.8 and 42 points 12th from the Eagles. This is a real concern. Why is this? Well, this is quite simple. Carlton have reacted in game, plowing, flooding the corridor, pulling players behind the 50 by, by the halfway. And what this does is when you win the ball back, it means you don't have any options to get it. Everyone's condensed. So it means everything is a handball or a shot, which then puts you into more pressure. When we go back to eight, 12 weeks ago, Carlton were quite willing to commit minimal people behind the ball but also really spread. It was almost a scattered zone that they played. And what this allowed them to do was when they won the ball back, get the ball moving, go, go forward real quickly. Lots of options taking territory very quickly and having space. This is imperative against this game that West Coast Eagles want you to flood the corridor. They want it to become congested. They want it to become stodgy, you know, like almost like molasses. They want it like dark treacle, really sticky, really slimy really hard and with the wet weather coming in the blues are going to have to find ways to spread and keep for territory that is imp imperative big knock on that has been Cowan's pressure and when we come to the pressure stats you will see really really bad at the moment so turnover against Cowan 10th this has been where it's been all year the big thing we've been saying is the against isn't so bad if the scores for are so good and this has started to come down by about four places since eight weeks ago and because Carlton have flooded there, it's also easy to create chains early and pull them out of position. That diagonal kick we saw Hawthorne exploit, we've seen six weeks of teams are just getting more sharper at it as they watch the tape. You are looking at the second worst turnover defence side, though, in the Eagles. So this is a great opportunity here for the Blues to go a little bit more bold, commit men forward, put the pressure on early and really look to make this area of vulnerability. The eighth best turnover Differential in the league, negative 3.6 versus 16.4, the second worst. Gives the Blues hope, and this is something that the Blues have got a target. We need to go back to that being more ostentatious, particularly team defence without the ball. The defensive half has been one that has absolutely plummeted. A team that was top five for this six weeks ago, now to be rock bottom, 23.8 versus eighth. Why has that? Why has that? Again, Cow and over committing numbers down behind the ball, which means that the ability to take a space and to hit teams on the counter has almost died. By the time Carlton move the ball from goal line to their own defensive 50, teams have just set the spread very quickly. The Blues have really, really gone into their shells, particularly with their ball movement. Also, it is because the midfield just aren't putting pressure in. So these rebound 50s, rebound 50s, rebound inside 50s are just happening, these repeat entries. And you're also seeing the midfield almost set up at the D50 line. So they haven't even got any options once that first kick comes through, which then results as going out wide. This is a real key area for West Coast Eagles to look at and go forward pressure does break out in the last couple of weeks. And you can see the defensive defensive half has been striped quite strong. We're not really seeing a lot of slingshots. It's been the midfield turnovers. It's been that real key battleground that has really ki killed Carlton recently. They're turning it over like flies in that middle of the park because that movement for them to score from defensive half has almost stagnated. The forward half scores from generation. We know that this is a key pillar of us. And this has been really one that was really, 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 really poignant. At the moment, this has been more of an opportunist work. And the Blues have got to go back to this game because even though Eagles are 14th, with pressure, this will change. And we have seen sides in the last six weeks 
really warp this number. West Coast and um, Hawthorne last week absolutely destroyed this area as we predicted. This will be another game where West Coast Eagles will be saying to their smalls, put pressure on the Blues, make them go short, make them go left to right, and then make that long bomb cut come. And what we can do is we can set them traps. And you can see Carlton reacted last week to trying to go for a run and carry. And it backfired as the pressure came. You can see the forward half defence, 10 versus 15th. Again, this is a key cornerstone of the Blues. The Blues have got to be looking at this. If we can put pressure in the forward half of the ground, we can break this side. But it is really key that they're bold and play with risk. They've got some one to get caught out the back. And these stats are telling us Cal have been so reactive in an eight-week block. It started with a stoppage. It started with forward half defence, defensive half defence. Before you know it, the easiest fix is pull players back. In reality, it kills you. And the Blues have got to really be sharp around that area. Centre bounce, this is another area that we always laugh at because it used to be strong. It's now getting bad. 13 versus 5th, 12.6 for the Eagles versus 9. The Blues here around stoppage, we're really seeing at the centre bounce, the Blues playing that more defensive player, George Hewitt, in a pure defence role and Cripps rolls to the defence side, which leaves one person, whether it be Walsh, Kennedy or Cripps, when they alternate on the attacking side of the ball, almost exposed and teams have ex ex really expected this. And one of the things they've done is they know Pitt and Ett doesn't contest in the rooks when the ball's at the deck. You saw Lloyd Meek all the time in centre bounces almost take a step back as the ball has won and he goes to Cripps or he goes to Hewitt and he tries to stop that extraction. And you can see Carlton's defence of centre bounce, the second worst in the league. And this is detrimental to the Blues when they have such the bodies they do. In 6-6-6, I call it the Carlton rule. It should favour us. And the way we've set up, we've really set up defensive and almost, I would say, cowardly at times in this area. It's going to be interesting. The Blues don't have them tolls to dine out on. So the only way to do this is win this and create control. You can't just rely on a scrub kick. This is a key battleground here because suddenly it's become evened up. It's not like it was where you could maybe dart one in 50. You're going to have the two bigs to one on one. You're going to have to play this out with run and stun. This is Cooper Lord's strength though. And I really hope Voss goes bold and gives Cooper Lord some senior responsibility in his first game. The differential, 8th versus 17th in Eagles' favour. The pressure acts. These numbers really are a warped figure because this is because Carlton are playing without the ball. 10 versus 12. Very interesting here because every side in the last couple of weeks has ranked in the top five of this stat against us. Teams are knowing to put pressure on and Carlton are kind of feeding the pressure in the wrong area of the grounds. Defensive half and forward half. We want it in that midfield. This is going to be a real key area because teams who have put pressure on Carlton's midfield have had great success and you can see Pressure acts against, it's only mid-table, we're not really facing anything too astronomical, but then the way we set up to deal with pressure, but going short, going shallower, is really putting pressure on the ball. Ninth differential versus seventh. The battle of pressure is going to be so integral, and <clears throat> it's interesting because we've been wanting this for ages, pressure acts to mirror tackles, and they do, and the problem is, is at the moment, Carlton are doing it themselves when you look at them tackles of, against, do you know what I mean? They are becoming really, really heavily hunted and the Blues aren't playing it. The top teams like Sydney, even though they've gone through them bad stages recently, they've got that ability to attack and take the game on and really embrace contact with the runners. When you are shallow, you're taking contact and you've got no other option than to give the ball back by bombing it long or overhandballing it into more tackle ease. This is a real key area where Carlton have got to keep the spread. You saw, you saw Hawthorne, they worked smarter, not harder. Keeping that spread meant Cowan had to commit players, and then when they didn't, it meant you always had them uncontested. And the tackle differential paints the story. 12 versus 13. These are two sides that are at the other end of the table, but statistically are almost the same. This is an area here where the Blues have got to look at. And then when you come on the tackles inside 50, a key cornerstone here of your ability, especially when you're loose inside 50. And as you can see, the Blues, 18, six tackles a game from inside 50 playing 16th. This has got to improve. Whoever plays in that forward line needs to be looking at pass score is two tackles each. It can't be six. If it's six, he's coming out with way too much relaxation in the back half of the ground. And you can see tackles inside 50, counting the most tackled inside 50 side. Teams have noticed this slow spit. 
slow the ball movement up, speed the decision making up. You'll get turnovers in the middle of the park. <clears throat> Count an 11th differential versus the worst. So this is an area here. Great game for the Blues because everything you've done bad, that is your identity, if you do well, traditionally you beat the Eagles. The battle of the ground here, Territory, Carlton 13th, 18th for the Eagles. This is a really important one because Territory is so important if your pressure numbers are in the top four and your tackle inside 50s are in the top four. At the moment, they're mid-tier, and that is a concern. Before, they were so high. Carlton, as always, real average at defending Territory. When they need to tackle, they have been. It's, it's at that point, though. It's making it a little bit easier for yourself. It's committing the men behind to your in-flooded areas as opposed to going out there bold and where Carlton was sometimes overloaded in certain areas. The pressure negated that. It was a real bold and ostentatious play. And you can see the territory differential, 12th versus 16th. The Blues have got to be positive here. It's so important, your territory. Even though on paper they should win this battle, it's no good winning territory if you're not doing the tackles and the basics. And with it being predicted to be wet, so imperative that territory is good, but the pressure and the tackles around the fall of the ball are very, very good. We look at these efficiency areas. Cow and 11 for marks inside 50 versus 6th. And again, playing deeper means the entries are launched from longer, further away, which means they're less accurate, which means they go into the B-word territory, bombing. The Blues have got to lower their eyes, shallow their entries, play that extra kick. And Carlton's unwillingness to play that extra kick, particularly with Elijah and co playing at half forward, has really been poignant, something Hawthorne really exploited. It works twofold if you can take marks 55 out. One, it allows you to drag the zone a little bit, and change the angle of attack, play with the zone. But two, if you're bombing them in and you're not having that extra kick, teams leave that 55 area open for a reason. It's a low it's a low score rate. And a lot of the marks inside the last six weeks particularly have been from low percentile ranges. And you can see counting the ninth best defence from marks inside 50 versus the 12th. It's been the amount of inside 50s we've had though. 23% is about AFL norm. When you double the inside 50s of what you're expected, 23% is a lot. A lot of marks inside 50 when you've got a lot of inside 50s against. Goals, this is a big area where the Blues were getting the ball deeper. The pressure was there. They were able to take scores off the deck from non-marks. Cowton shot down to 14th versus the second most efficient side. They're going to attack it. Cowan's back line hasn't changed. And it's going to be really interesting because the faith the backline has had in the midfield in the last six weeks has been non-existent. They've got a real new forward line. So the faith is going to have to be built very early doors for this. Count 11th from defending goals, 15th. They do concede a lot of goals to West Coast Eagles. This is it. Get that ball to 55, change the angles, put pressure on it, make sure the tackle inside 50 and the forward half pressure is A grade and you can break this side down. And you can see here, scores from inside 50. This was number one, number two, seven, eight weeks ago. Down to 14th versus fourth. The Blues need to make sure this midfield pressure is good. They're not giving up easy entries. They've got to make the team launch from further away. The protection areas, real fascinating. Calvin's fourth best rebound 50, partly because of inside 50s, but always going to be strong with the personnel they've got. The big one here is... The rebound 50 rate against where it was top four as well is now 10 versus the best side at stopping rebound 50. This does paint two stories. One, it's easy to score against. So there isn't them options to make. But also, to be fair to West Coast, they have been really aggressive coming out of rebound 50. Hence their high scores in defensive half. And that intercept marks, they're a ground marking side. They're a ground defending side. This is going to be really interesting because Carlton have gone in small, which really matches that. Even though their back line is traditionally tall, people talk about that all the time. West Coast are very good on the ground. So the Blues are going to have to go in this and go, OK, let's do it. And you can see this with their forward line. They're not the heaviest mobile forward line, even though people say that they're swapped slightly tall. That's not true, because you can see here the third intercept marks. Do you know what I mean? They're the, one of the best teams at defending against it, but they play a very in-front-type mentality. 
Teams have been really reluctant because they do launch it early to really put bodies on. Cowan have got two guys who can intercept that won't be playing in the lockdown role in Lucky Cowan and Mitch McGovern. This is a key area here that these boys go back to being 45 out from goal and attacking the ball. The one-on-one -on -one percentage, Cowan were top two for this. They're now 13th. Teams are exposing it. Repeat entries, getting it isolated. It's a big concern, this area. Cowan have got to start putting that defence early. And we look at the contested dirty ball start that we really like. Cowan's seventh for contested versus 17th. And ninth against and 14th. Again, really, really flooding them areas. Really flooding them areas. Teams are spreading cow and arm. They've got to look to get this out wide and get it out wide early. This is a key battleground. If you can slow Cowan's ball movement down, it's there. And they're predicting at the moment, based on the results, a two-point win to the Eagles. So a lot to t change. Big game coming up this weekend. I'm really looking forward to We've got to get behind them. I'm angry as well. We've got to set the standard, and this has got to be a standard-setting game. The Blues have got to go into this, be strong, be bold, be industrious, and ultimately come out with the chocolates. Everything stacked against them, but the maths are simple. Two wins out of two with young personnel. Vibes will be high, and then let's hope something can happen in finals. But it will be disastrous if they don't make finals. Morale and externally. Blues have got to get in now, lock and engage. Go Blues, peace, love and light. Palm out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's had a